All right, now we're going to talk about what's called uh, tabular integration. Um, so what is tabular integration? Uh, basically, it, it's really just integration by parts uh, used repeatedly. Okay, so um, here, uh, notice this is the same thing as example four for integration by parts. So um, that's, we did that in an earlier video. So we had integral of x squared cosine of x dx. Uh, we did that with integration by parts. So we use this uh, Liate rule to pick u. So uh, remember u uh, is, uh, we go down this list, choose whatever appears first to be u. Uh, this is an algebraic function, x squared, and then cosine of x is a trig function, algebraic appears first. So we choose u to be x squared, so dv is cosine of x dx. We do the integration by parts formula, we end up with this here. So I'm, I'm leaving out a lot of details because we did do this exact same example in example four, uh, I think it was example four, in, uh, in an earlier video with integration by parts. Um, and we're going to do it again here with tabular integration to show, you know, how much easier it is uh, to do tabular integration. Um, and we'll talk about when to use it and things like that and how it works. Um, so anyway, when we do the integration by parts formula, we end up with this. Then we have blah, 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 integral of 2 to the x sine of x dx. We have to do integration by parts again. Okay, and then when we integrate this, or when we do integration by parts on this guy here, we end up with this expression inside the square brackets here. Okay, and then we simplify... Um, skipped a few steps here, some details there, but we end up with this in the end. Okay, so um, basically we did integration by parts twice. Now doing it twice is really not that bad, um, but it would be nice if there's a way that we can, you know, do this more compactly because why do we have to do it twice? Well, we had to do it twice basically because this is an x squared. Okay, so what if instead of x squared, um, what if we had like x to the 21st? Okay, now that's a bit of an extreme example, but it could happen. Okay, it's uh, it is possible to integrate that, but if you want to do that, then you'd have to do integration by parts 21 times, and you know that's that's just crazy. No, let's we're not going to do that. Um, so what we're going to do in this example is uh, talk about how to use tabular integration to sort of make this process go a little more quickly, um, and then we'll see that uh, if we had to do something like x to the 21st, um, it, tabular integration makes that fairly simple. Actually, well, even to the 21st would be pretty bad, but if you had something like x to the 5th. Okay, so if this were x to the 5th instead, you would do integration by parts 5 times, which would be terrible. But with tabular integration, it's relatively simple. Okay, so how do we do tabular integration? Um, well, what we do is we make a little table okay, with two columns. That's why it's called tabular integration, because we're going to set up a table with two columns. So um, let's do that here. So I'm going to leave this here just so we can compare later and see why this works the way it works. Okay, so we're going to set up our table here. Uh, so one column, let's use a different color here. Okay, so one column is going to be uh, derivatives. Of u. Okay, derivatives of u and then the column on the right is going to be uh, integrals or antiderivatives, whichever you prefer. Uh, integrals of dv, okay. intervals of dv. Okay, so what's this u and dv? Well, remember, with integration by parts, what did the formula say? Formula says integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so remember that's our integration by parts formula. So what, uh, when we do tabular integration, the first thing we do is set up this table. Now, what goes in the first row here? Okay, we're gonna do rows at a time here. So what goes in the first row? Well, the first row, we're going to put u and dv next to each other. Okay, so we put u and dv. How do we get u? Um, well, remember, um, tabular integration just is repeated integration by parts. So we're going to approach this the same way we approach integration by parts, which is uh, how do we choose u? Well, we just go down this list, whichever function appears first, um, that's what we choose u to be. Okay, so we actually already talked about it. We're still doing this example here. Okay, we're doing example one now with tabular integration. We're going to see how much easier it is. Um, so remember, let u be the algebraic function, not the trig function, because algebraic appears higher on this list. Okay, so u, uh, that is x squared. Okay, that's x squared. And what's dv? Well, if u is x squared, then dv has to be everything left over, which is uh, cosine of x. Really cosine of x dx, um, but what we could do here is not... Um, let's not put the dx on here. Okay, so really what this is going to be is u and v primed. Okay, because remember, remember how differentials work? Um, if we have a function v, then dv is just v primed uh, dx. Okay, v prime dx. So we're not going to put a dx on here. 
So really, if you want, instead of calling this integrals of dv, you could call it integrals of uh, v primed. Okay. Okay. So, um, but it doesn't really matter what we call the column as long as it makes sense. But the point is, let's not put dx's on here. Okay. So technically, maybe we should call it integrals of v prime. But uh, you know, it just doesn't matter. Um, all that matters is what goes in the columns here. Okay. And, and just that we know how to work with it. Okay. So again, uh, x squared goes here. And then uh, here, this is going to be cosine of x, okay? Because this is u and this is v primed, okay? When remember, v primed is just dv but without the dx, okay? dv without the dx, okay? So x squared and cosine of x. Now, what do we do? Now, what we do, um, okay? So so far, nothing really uh, too different, right? It's I mean, we're set up this table, which is a little bit different, but we're still approaching it like integration by parts, okay? We choose a u based on this list here, and then we get dv is everything else. Take off the dx, so we just have v primed. Okay, so now what do we do? Uh, the next thing we do with tabular integration is look in the u column and just start taking derivatives. So what's the derivative of x squared? Uh, it's 2x. What's the derivative of 2x? It's 2. What's the derivative of 2? It's 0. Okay, um, okay. now, uh, so that's why this is called derivatives of u, because we start with u and take derivatives until we hit 0. Okay, so when you do tabular integration, always stop when you hit zero. Always stop in this column when you hit zero. Okay, so now we have one, two, three entries here. So now we're going to integrate this three times. Okay, so what's the integral of cosine of x? Uh, it's sine of x. What's the integral of sine of x? It's negative cosine of x. What's the integral of negative cosine of x? It's uh, negative sine of x. Okay. And now we stop here because we hit the same row with a zero. Okay, we hit the zero row. So that's uh, why we stop. And that's what we, we always do that with tabular integration. Um, when you take derivatives of u, always stop at zero. And then when you do the integrals of v primed, always stop once you get to that same row. Okay, once you get to this row here. All right, now what we do is we got to pair these guys up. How do we pair them up? Uh, we pair them up like this. These guys go together. These guys go together. And these guys go together. Okay. So yeah, if we kept going here, the zero would go with the next one, but zero, what we're gonna do here is multiply. So we're gonna end up with x squared times sine of x, two x times negative cosine of x, two times negative sine of x. But if we kept going here, we have zero times blah, 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 zero times blah, 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 so we're just a zero. So that's why we stop at zero, because we're gonna use these to multiply. So if we're multiplying by zero, nothing happens anyway, okay? Now we have to be careful of alternating signs, uh, S-I-G-N sign, positive and negative. So uh, when we do tabular integration, uh, we always start with a positive sign. Okay, always start with a positive sign, plus sign. So this is a plus. Okay, that's a plus. This is minus. This is plus. And this one doesn't matter. Um, okay, so this up here, let's fix that a little bit. Okay. Okay. So uh, what does that mean? Well, how do we, what, you know, what does it all mean? How do we use that? Well, let's come down here and write, okay, uh, integral of x squared cosine of x dx. Okay, now what we're going to do is put this all together. Um, so what do we have here? Let's zoom in just a tiny bit. So positive x squared times sine of x. Okay, that's what this means. This means positive x squared times sine of x. So this is positive x squared times sine of x. And then... Uh, this minus sign means minus 2x times negative cosine of x. So minus 2x times negative cosine of x. And then uh, plus 2 times negative sine of x. Plus 2 times negative sine of x. Okay. And then that's it. We hit 0, so now we're done. We just have to simplify this. And also, uh, don't forget the plus c. Okay. It's very easy to forget that, um, but just be very careful. So then when we simplify, we get uh, x squared sine of x uh, minus negative becomes plus 2x cosine of x and then uh, minus 2 sine of x plus c. Okay. So when we do tabular integration, this is the answer that we get. Okay. x squared sine of x plus 2x cosine of x minus 2, uh, minus 2 sine x plus c. And notice that's the exact same answer that we have written down here. Okay, which remember, we didn't do the details of this in this video, but this is example four, um, I think example four, um, of integration by parts okay, in an earlier video. So, um, 
you know, if you want to see the details, go ahead and check that out. But it's, you know, we get the same answer here. And this, uh, it might feel longer because we spend a lot of time talking about it, but actually tabular integration, once you get the hang of it, it's really just, it goes so quickly. And it really is much better than doing repeated integration by parts uh, out the long way like this, okay? So here, you could integrate this by parts, uh, do all the details, you'll get this integral integrated by parts, you'll get this mess here, uh, simplify a little bit, da da da. Or if you do tabular integration, just pick, uh, get your U, okay, the same way you always do, get your U just by following this Liate or whatever rule. Um, take derivatives of U until you get zero, okay? And then set up your integrals of V prime column. So this is DV, but without DX, okay? So if U is X squared and then DV is cosine of X DX, which means V prime is just cosine of X. Okay, so don't put the DXs in here. Um, and then just keep taking integrals until you get to this same row, okay? Um, and then you pair them up, always pair them up like this, diagonal down like that, always pair them up like that. Um, and then uh, just do plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus as, uh, until you get to the end. And then that's that. So um, why does that work the way it does? Okay, let's zoom out a little bit here. So remember, this is just repeated integration by parts. So remember, integration by parts says uh, the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay. So uh, this guy here, okay, this guy here is u, right? This guy here is u, kind of out of colors here. Let's maybe uh, use black again, I guess. So this right here is u, okay? And uh, this is v primed, okay? This right here is v primed. Okay, so if this is v primed, uh, what's the integral of v primed? It's just v, right? So this is v, okay? <clears throat> so that's why we pair this guy up with this guy because it's u, v. Okay, remember the integration by parts formula says blah, 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 u times v. That's why we multiply this guy by this guy, u times v, okay? And also when we repeat integration by parts, it's always gonna be this guy times that next guy down. So u, v, here's the next u, the next v, the next u, the next v, and so on and so forth. So do integration by parts on this integral, you end up with this expression here, and do integration by parts again, here's your uh, new u and your new v, okay? So actually here it is again, if we do integration by parts on this, uh, u would be 2x, okay? So here's our 2x. And then dv is sine of x dx, so if you integrate to get v, you then you get uh, negative cosine of x, okay? So the negative, here's the negative sign here, negative cosine of x, and then here it is again. So this time, this guy times that guy, okay? All right, so now um, that's that, okay? So uh, that's again why, so here's u, here's v prime to integrate v prime to get v, and remember, integration by parts is uv, so uv, 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 and so on and so forth. All right, now, that's, that's why that's set up the way it is. Uh, now, what about this plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus? So, uh, always start with plus, and then keep alternating, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, uh, and just keep going until you get to the very end here, okay? So, yeah, there would be a minus on here, but we're not going to do anything with the zero, so we don't have to worry about it, okay? But there would be a minus here if we had to keep going. So anyway, where do these signs, S-I-G-N, signs come from? Where do the positive and negative signs come from? Uh, they come from here, basically, plus x squared sine of x. This plus comes from the fact that this is a positive right here, okay? Um, this minus comes from this minus sign right here. Okay, this minus comes from uh, this minus sign right here. Okay, so this minus comes from this minus sign right here. What about this plus? This plus comes from here, Okay, this minus sign combined with this minus sign, okay? So when we repeat integration by parts, we have minus signs being affected by minus signs. We have the inside these square brackets here. And if we had to do integration by parts again on this integral, we'd have another set of brackets where we have a minus, a minus, and then the third minus. So that's why this would be minus again. Okay, so every time you do integration by parts, uh, you add another minus sign. Okay, so integration by parts once, there's one minus sign. So that's why we have this minus sign here. Okay, this minus sign comes directly from this minus sign right here. Okay, this minus sign comes directly from that. Um, this minus sign, just by the way, that just comes from integrating sine of x. Okay, so that doesn't really matter. This, uh, depending on what you have, this may or may not be there, this minus sign. But uh, this minus sign is always here, okay? Always plus, minus, plus, minus. Remember, this plus comes from the fact that this is just positive here, positive uv, okay? Uh, just uv, so no minus sign on there. This minus sign comes from this minus sign right here, okay? Same thing, this minus sign right here, or that one there, same thing. Okay, this minus sign comes from that guy or that guy, they're the same one. Okay, so this minus sign comes from here, and then this plus sign 
comes from the fact that this minus sign and this minus sign combine to make a plus sign. Okay. And then again, if we keep going, we'll have three minus signs uh, being multiplied, or three, min three negative ones really being multiplied to give us a minus sign again. Okay, so that's why they keep alternating. Because again, every time you do integration by parts, you add another minus sign inside of parentheses like that. Uh, so then you're just going to change the S-I-G-N sign from positive to negative, positive, negative. Okay. So that's really what tabular integration is. It's just repeated integration by parts. Um, and it really simplifies things if you have to do something like this. Um, so we'll do a couple more examples with this and we'll see. It also works with definite integrals, which is nice. Um, and this really simplifies things like what if we have x to the fifth times cosine of x, something like that. Um, and we'll do something similar to that in the next example, example two. Okay. So um, that's tabular integration, and we see here we get the same answer if we did integration by parts out twice. Okay. So um, tabular integration really is a little better. It might not feel like it, but that's just because we went through all the details here and we took it a little bit slower. But really, uh, for tabular integration, always set up these two columns, derivatives of u, integrals of v primed. First row is always u and v primed. Take derivatives of u until you get to zero. Take integrals of v primed. Keep, just, keep taking integrals until you get to uh, the same row here. Pair them up like this. Don't forget about the plus minus plus minus, and then just slap it all together, um, and then you're good. Okay, so we'll do a more, uh, more involved, sort of more complicated example in the next video. So this is example one and a brief explanation of tabular integration. And again, here's our answer here.